You're all ready to go. It's all just going to be there. Maybe you're walking around and you've got a, a lethal injection pump right here next to your side. And at every moment of the day, any single moment, the button could be pushed and it's all over. I tried to use a graphic illustration this morning in the earlier service. Imagine if you were sitting there with a doctor and the doctor said to you, listen, you've got an inoperable brain aneurysm. An aneurysm is a balloon type construction in a blood vessel, a part of your blood vessel that begins to swell to a point where it might burst. And if it bursts, it doesn't heal itself. It can't the blood can't clot. It just bursts and that's it. And if you have a brain aneurysm, usually people die. It's usually worse than stroke because there's no way to repair that thing. Imagine the doctor tells you that you have an inoperable brain aneurysm and that at any moment of the time, you could be gone. If you're walking around with the knowledge that you are seconds away from being gone, how would that change the way you talk? The next time you pull out your checkbook and you're beginning to write down some numbers, what would it change if you thought, as soon as I sign this thing, I'm gone? What would it change? I don't need to save any money for myself. I can be generous. What would it change? If you're spending time with your children, you're saying, as soon as we're done with our playtime, I could be gone. You're spending time with your family. You have the opportunity to be a part of a, a church fellowship. You have the opportunity to tell your coworker about Jesus. And you say to yourself, what would it be like if as soon as I'm done talking, I could be gone? Jesus says, deny yourself and take up your cross. Meaning at every second, every moment of every day, you believe that this could be your last breath. And as far as you're concerned, you'd be okay with that. What if the doctor told you there's a cure? It's inoperable, but there is a cure. And the cure is don't follow Jesus. Would eternal life be worth it to you for you to stay with this attitude that at any moment you could be gone? I think that's the question Jesus is asking. He says, deny yourself, take up your cross. That is a harsh word to say. But I want to just bring out the details for you. I want to make this very specific. This is what Jesus says. These are his words, not mine. Look at this. He says, you can't be a disciple without denying yourself. If you're a person who says, listen, I just, you know, now and then I just indulge in who I am and I relish in me and I'm kind of prideful at times, but that's okay because, you know, it's hard to be humble when you're as good as I am. Um, you know, maybe you're that, Jesus says, you can't be a disciple unless you deny yourself. He also says, you can't be a disciple without walking with a cross behind Jesus. If Jesus is wearing a cross, I'm wearing a cross. If Jesus is at any moment willing to die, I'm at any moment willing to die. You can't be Thirdly, saved without giving your life up for Jesus and the gospel. And this is the challenge. It's my desire that at the end of today, you know why you shouldn't be a Christian. Because the only people who can qualify as being Christians are those who say, by God's grace, I am nothing. And so my salvation comes when I hand my life over completely to him and give him complete control, holding nothing back, not standing here saying, God, I'm going to give you the first 10% and the rest of the 90 is me. But you say, I'm giving God 100%. And when I get more, he gets that too. Everything about me is his. Every moment I breathe is his moment you can't be saved, Jesus says, unless you give up your life. See what he says. If anyone's ashamed of me, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them. He says, whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. 
Jesus isn't concerned about you having a better life now. I believe you will have a better life. I believe that when the Holy Spirit comes into you and begins to reveal to you the person God has made you to be and you begin living that out, I believe you will experience greater joy than you've ever had before. I believe you will experience greater wonder and greater purpose than you've ever had before. I believe a better life is real, it's possible, it's true for all who follow Jesus. But that is not the motivation, that is not the goal, that is not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking talking about two moments and two moments only in your life. One, the moment when your soul leaves your body. Two, the moment when he comes back to earth. Those are his moments. He says, what can anyone give for their soul? If you lose your soul, you ain't getting it back. And then finally, he says this, the son of man will be ashamed of those who are ashamed of him when he comes in his father's glory with the holy angels. Jesus is only concerned with those two moments when you die And when he returns, is eternal life worth enough to you that you're willing to give up everything for Jesus? The promise is great. The requirement is great. I believe Jesus is setting up for us a choice that you and I need to make. And it goes like this. I can live for now or I can live for later. I can live for now or I can live for later. If you're taking notes, what I'd like for you to do is take the word for in that phrase. Live for now, live for later. Take the word for, circle it, and kind of draw an arrow taking that word for out of the rest of the sentence. Because Jesus makes us this promise. If you live for now, then you live now. If you live for later, then you live later. You get what you live for. If my life is all about living for Jesus and for his message, I get Jesus and his message and I live with eternal life. If I live for then, I get then. If I live for now, I get now. And that's it. Live for now or live for later. And you live now or you live later. Now, this is the most challenging passage that I know of, and it's very vague. What does it mean to deny myself and take up my cross? What does it mean to to live like I'm dead with Jesus? I know it's kind of a vague thing, and so I'm going to try to make it really practical for you. When I was a a teenager, I remember relishing a story by a guy by the name of um, Jim Elliott. He was a student at the college that I would later go to, and I went to that college largely because of the influence of this man. His name is Jim Elliott, and he said a phrase. He said, a man is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. And he was talking about a person who was willing to give up everything of this world to gain eternal life. He was talking about this passage. Man is no fool who would give what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. And Jim Elliott invested years of his life training himself to understand the Greek language so he could understand the Bible, later training himself to understand uh, Spanish so that he could become a missionary, eventually training himself to understand a dialect from South America that he could then go and meet a tribe of people who were so vicious, no one had ever encountered any of them and returned. He was committed they needed to know Jesus. And so he and a friend named Nate Saint and a few other people got together and they got a plane and they flew down there after years of preparation. He got off the plane to try to encounter these people to let them know about Jesus and the gospel and never came back. His wife later would go to that same tribe and tell them that she forgave them. And in the process, God worked a miracle and the entire tribe of people came to know Jesus. It was popularized in a book called Through Gates of Splendor, later a movie, Beyond Gates of Splendor. And that story inspired me because it was about a guy who would give up everything, including his own life, for the sake of Jesus and the gospel. And the end result is a whole tribe full of people came to know Jesus. It inspired me but I've got a lot more to live for. Back when I was in high school, I could, I could live like that. Back when I was in college, I could live like that. But I've got a mortgage now. I've got a wife, I've got kids, I've got a car, I've got a Netflix account. 
I mean, if I die, who's going to take care of my family? Who's going who's to pay that mortgage? If I die, who's going to watch all those shows in my instant queue? I mean, I ha- I've got a reason to stay around for, for longer. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to deny myself and understand what that's really all about. So let me tell you. I'm going to give you two questions that I think will help you decide what this looks like for your life. Two questions. One is a general overview question, and then one is a question for your specific decisions you need to make. The general overview question is this. Who owns my life? Who gets to determine whether I breathe anymore? Who gets to determine these things? Who owns my life? Do I own my life or does Jesus own my life? That's the first question. The second question is the question that you ask yourself over every decision, over every opportunity, and it's simply this. Is this decision for now or for later? Am I making this decision right now for now or for later? Now, I'm not saying that you should never make a now decision. There are some decisions you should make now. You should probably have lunch today. I'm beginning to get a little hungry myself. There's some snacks out there. When you eat, that is somewhat a decision for now. But is there a way you can eat that is also looking forward to the future? What do I put in my body that affects my spiritual life? What do I put in my body that affects my overall health, that affects my ability to impress other people with the message of Jesus more than the the profoundness of what I am or whatever that is? What is it? that I can do now for later. Even the smallest decisions can have impact when you ask that question. Because it all boils down to this. Is eternal life worth that much to me? Whoever would lose themselves for the sake of Jesus and the gospel will find eternal life, will be saved, will have a new family Well, yes, have persecutions, but we'll have eternal life. That's our question. So what I want to do is give you some brain space to think about this. We're going to take just a few moments in reflection. I want to ask that you would take that card out of your bulletin, flip it over to the backhand side, and just begin to think through what is God teaching me today? What in my life is the decision? What decision in my life needs to go through this question? I'm going to give you just a couple moments, then we're going to finish up with one final song and take our offering. Let's pray.